So welcome everyone um, to this uh, live call and to figuring out how we can all, you know, uh, work together against this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to introduce our panelists as well. So first of all, we have uh, Nishar Bhai, who is the CEO of Bangladesh Angels. And as you know that the Bangladesh Angels Network uh, has been, uh, has close to 60 plus members. They have worked on a lot of uh, startup fundings and everything. I think they have closed three fundings as well. And we love to hear Nitro Spice Tech on how things are progressing with the investor sentiment and everything. We also have uh, Tinapa on the call as well, who is it, the advisor to Startup Bangladesh and ICD Ministry. Hi, Tinapa. Again, Hello. thank you for joining everyone. Thank you. Uh, Tinapa has been an icon for all of us at Bangladesh, and I'm glad she's staying back in Bangladesh this time and not going back to the US. So again, we appreciate yeah, we that and hear from Tinapa some of the things from the government side as well. Uh, we have Bjorn from Roots of Impact, which is an international investment uh, financial advisory firm. Uh, dedicated to making finance work for positive impact on the people and planet. Hi, Bjorn. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to hearing about your international experiences and what we can do together for Bangladesh. And then we have Hi, Rahat Bhai. And all. Yeah. Hey, Bjorn. And I can also see Rahat Bhai all cleaned up for today's meeting. Thank you, Rahat <laughs> Bhai, for joining. I kind of like the previous look better. Uh, anyways, um, uh, but, you know, Rahat Bhai is uh, one of the founders of Anchorless Bangladesh, which is a venture capital firm uh, uh, who's going to invest in Bangladesh uh, early stage companies, right? And we'd love to hear Rahat Bhai's take how uh, uh, they want to progress in Bangladesh in the current COVID-19 scenario and how uh, some of the global perspectives come in as well. And we will be very soon, I think we'll uh, have Shamim Bhai on the call as well. But I think we do have Shokot Bhai, who is the General Secretary of Venture Capital Private Equity Association of Bangladesh on the call. And uh, Shamim Bhai will join the call as well. Bijan, I'm here. Oh, Shay Shamim Bhai, sorry. I didn't see you there. So Shamim Bhai is the, uh, the president of uh, VCPAB uh, and one of the general partners of Pegasus Tech Ventures. And uh, Shamim Bhai, we're very glad uh, to have this session for all the founders here as well. I think we have 50 plus participants now. And um, I'd like to start off. So what I was thinking, I will ask one round of questions for each of the panelists, and then uh, we can get on to taking questions from the audience. If you have any queries, you can also use the chat window to write your uh, questions as well. We'll take that at the end of the panel discussion as well. Uh, usually I start from my right side uh, in a virtual call that is not possible. So I'll start with uh, kind of uh, going to Nijorbhai first. Uh, so Nijorbhai, as we were discussing that you represent uh, the largest angel forum in Bangladesh, which has 60 plus uh, members as of now. Uh, you have close three investments, but uh, we are hearing a lot of the startups coming in and saying that a lot of the investment deals, which was uh, on the pipeline, are getting delayed or canceled towards the end of the year. So what would be your guiding points for the startup on how to figure out and how to reach angels and what you can do to help them as well? So over to you. Absolutely. Uh, first, you know, thank you so much for having me, uh, Bijan Bhai, and for organizing this like Castle Partners. Um, good to see many of our members as well on the call, as well as, you know, pipeline and portfolio companies. Um, I think, you know, I mean, we haven't been immune to it either. Uh, so we had, you know, in the last three weeks, two deals. One was in term sheet phase that we were ready to give out. Another where a syndicate had formed, you know, those take time. Um, and we had to give those up or at least put those on hold, right? Um, so it's, it's tough times for, for everyone. Uh, but I think some principles kind of stay the same, right? So I think, you know, early stage in, in investing in companies, angel investing, I think it's still very much about the leadership qualities of the founder or the founding team. And I think now is the time to kind of distinguish and, and show that, right, uh, if you're a founder. And so what I mean by that, I think in the short term, I think it's very much about how you manage your runway. Uh, so if you have less than three months of runway, getting that to six months. If you have six months of runway, getting that to 12 months. Uh, if you have 12 months, trying to get that to 18 months. Um, the things you can do, you know, I think a lot of people, even within this group, have talked about moratorium on rents, for example, getting buy-in from employees on salary deferrals, uh, potentially converting those, I don't know, maybe into ESOPs. Um, if you have receivables, getting customers to pay you, even with discounts. Uh, if you have payables, trying to get those lengthened by suppliers. I think all those things kind of show that if you're able to get buy-in from your stakeholders, right? And if, you're will, if they're willing to take a hit to keep you afloat, I think that speaks a lot to your leadership abilities and also the fact that you're valuable, right? That what you're doing is valuable. And I think that makes investors take notice. Um, I think in the medium term, um, in short to medium term, uh, you know, obviously a lot of companies are now kind of pivoting to new revenue streams uh, with the assets that they have. 
Uh, but I think also just how you engage with customers, I think also shows, you know, in addition to your stakeholders, right? So one company, um, it's a pet e-commerce site, you know, they've been generating 75% of their revenues through services and they were using that to kind of drive also sales on their, um, on products. And obviously with the lockdown, uh, what happened was the services went down, but then the, the founders, they, you know, they're still facilitating interactions between their customers and veterinarians over online. But when the delivery channels kind of stopped, the founders were still getting queries every day. And what they were doing is for, you know, 10 days, they were just delivering all day, every day by themselves. I think that speaks a lot to, um, you know, the brand equity that they built with their customer base and also the fact that, you know, they're willing to go that extra mile, right? So that's, that's one example I've seen from our pipeline. Um, and I think in the, the longer term, though, um, I think it, it's, there's a lot to be done around optimizing business models, right? And obviously, this, you know, COVID situation is not forever. The lockdowns are not forever. Uh, but some things will change. And I think what at least I'm hearing from our investor base is that, you know, we're, I think a lot of investors are no longer willing to necessarily reward top line growth if it's not high quality. And so what that means is, you know, maybe you're, you're getting growth, but it's, you know, you're having to subsidize it through high marketing, right? Your customer acquisition costs are high. Your, your retention and recurring revenues are not enough, uh, right? Your average basket size isn't high enough. Um, all those kinds of different metrics. Uh, you know, I think now is the time to think about how to optimize that. So let's say, you know, if you have multiple revenue streams or customer segments, um, are you focusing on the ones that, you know, really consolidating and rallying the team around the ones that are actually profitable and growing? Right. On the other hand, if you're if you are reliant, so this was the case with one of our portfolios, uh, where they were relying on one revenue stream, but now they're taking the time to kind of retool their platform, trying to introduce uh, to, trying to introduce new tools and, and products for different segments. Uh, you know, what, in terms of your supply chain, whether or not I think you're able to kind of build redundancies, because that's what I've also seen is that a lot of companies were kind of reliant on one or two key suppliers, and that's definitely hurt them. Um, I, I think all those kinds of things, right? Uh, the way you can kind of Built for the long term, uh, you're thinking through different scenarios, understanding that things have changed, and that's you know, and your fundraising plan accordingly has changed. I think that's a good story to tell the investors. Um, I think, lastly, I think in terms of how you fundraise, uh, so I think this is also something that we've been having discussions around. You know, if if you've already got discussions ongoing with investors, and if it's a matter of maybe 10, 20, 30 percent difference in, in valuation. I would say let's try to close that, right? Get get that money in the bank sooner rather than later, uh, because I think you know I think I wouldn't be alone to say that you know the longer you wait, I think the harder the investment climate will be. Uh, I think the traditional expectation that a lot of founders might have, where you know if you raise money 12 months before and and trying to get maybe two to three x kind of uh, multiple on that. Um, I think that's going to be increasingly very difficult. Uh, maybe 20, 30, 40, 50% premium. I, I think that's, you can get that if you're a strong founder and you exhibit those traits. Uh, maybe some of us will have to raise at par if, if we need to, and some of us might have to go for down rounds. Uh, but I think, you know, sooner you do that is, is probably better. Uh, and, and the other things also is obviously trying to rally your existing investor base. And we'll talk about that in the next question. I know. Um, and also I think, you know, just to kind of plug you <laughs> what, what you're doing, um, I'm also encouraging a lot of founders to look for alternate sources of capital. Uh, obviously investors are discretionary, particularly ones that have that run their own business. I think for the next three to six months, I think you'll have a hard time getting their attention. Uh, but, um, you know, a lot of donors have made commitments to, to invest. And, and so there's a bunch of grants going around. I think it's also worth looking into. Uh, thank you, Nijir Bhai. I think that's very well put. And I think um, some of the, one of the points that I actually uh, like that um, it's better to get the money in sooner than later, given how the scenario is developed. So even if it's a, a difference in valuation that you're looking at, it's better to, you know, close that particular round. Our, next, I wanted to move on to Shamim Bhai. Hi, Shamim Bhai. Uh, thank you again for joining us. And um, as the chairman of, as the president of uh, VCPAB, I know that some of the initiatives that you were taking, we saw, the, a lot of us saw the articles that you wrote. So maybe you can tell us that, A, what are some of the initiatives that VCPAB is taking to support the ecosystem? And what role do you think the venture capital uh, and in alter investment companies in Bangladesh will pay over the next three to six months in the ecosystem? Um, thank you, Bijan. Um, hi, everyone. It's always a pleasure. And, uh, I see our fellow panelists, uh, so good to see all, you all. Uh, so first of all, this is a defining challenge, defining moment in our 
probably uh, we will see in our generation and uh, that's probably one of the most uh, biggest challenges uh, we are probably facing in our lifetime. So first of all, we need to admit that, we need to understand the gravity of the situation. Um, secondly, I, I must salute all, all the startups of our ecosystem, because in this challenging time when the traditional businesses have failed to deliver a lot of things, our startups came up and tried to solve the problem. We have seen on the grocery sector, our startups, uh, Chal Dal and all other, uh, you know, uh, Pathao, Shahaj, everyone, they came forward and tried to solve the problem of uh, sending people food. Um, on the, on the uh, virtual health sector, we're seeing our startups coming forward. Uh, wherever it is, you know, the, the, there's like Sheba, Handy Mama, where people are locked down, not being able to repair their, uh, some of their uh, fridge, fridge or AC, they're coming forward. And uh, logistics side, companies like eCorea and others are coming forward and solving the logistics problem. Uh, so nothing would have been possible without the involvement of the startup. Some are, you know, came forward and, uh, dev, you know, uh, manufacturing or trying to build prototype for uh, ventilators. Uh, now, so we understand the contribution of startups during this difficult time, but also, you know, they have fundamentally contributed to change our lifestyle, starting from how we shop, how we buy things, how we watch, uh, you know, entertainment, movies and everything else. And that's where they have a significant contribution in not just changing the lifestyle on, uh, you know, with their innovative models contributing in the economic development. Uh, so, our startups also need to understand that, uh, you know, sometimes we think this is a two weeks, three weeks lockdown, but we need to understand the fact that this is a long-term challenge we have. You know, it's not just two weeks, three weeks, two months, three months. You know, uh, we have seen forecasts or, you know, a, a lot of uh, cautionary statements uh, starting from Canadian uh, Prime Minister to a lot of VCs from uh, starting from Bill Gates until we have the vaccine, this will come back. You know, this is not a, a temporary situation. So, 2020, 2021, we have to plan for for a long time. It's just one, two, three years we have to plan. And 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 where countries like Bangladesh, India, we are not efficient like uh, uh, countries like uh, you know South Korea, Singapore, or Wuhan. You know, when they just lockdown and, uh, you know, uh, they can contain the disease. And it's like us where, you know, social distancing is, is big, difficult, and we don't, you know, know how to manage uh, people's in when it comes back in pockets. So we have really have to prepare for two years. And of course, during that time, uh, we'll see challenges with the fund fundraising. And uh, so companies need to find out ways where they focus on profitability models rather than growth models. And we have seen that model changing after, uh, you know, the Uber and we work with, with, with those IPOs. We have seen people are started fo focusing on, you know, uh, profitability rather than just uh, fundraising, investing and growth models. So I think the startups have to ch uh, think about that. And uh, so I think I will pause at this, at this moment and, uh, if, if there's any question, I'd be happy to answer. Uh, thank you, Sharim Bhai. If anyone has any question, just you can also put in. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, uh, we can quickly take one question and then move on to the next panel question, which is, uh, what are the ways of sustainability for a startup in this crisis situation? Does one of the panel members would like to take that? What are the ways of sustainability for a startup in this crisis situation? Maybe Tina Appa or Ahad Bhai or anyone else. I, I, I feel like that's a pretty big question and <laughs> we will probably get to it in our conversation. Because uh, I think after everybody's talking, I think there'll be many points that people will bring up that will actually answer some, some of this. Sure, I think we can come back to the later on and I think move on to the next panelist. Uh, next, I'll move on to Rahat Bhai, who is the founding partner and CEO of Anchorless Bangladesh. And um, I have a difficult question for you, Rahat Bhai. 
so I know I know that. Um, uh, so you have worked at New Work as an advisor, as an investor in multiple companies for decades before coming here, and you have seen the the uh, two thousand eight financial crisis as well. So taking those experiences into light, what are some of the advice you would want to share with the ecosystem, uh, the current scenario that we're facing, and you know adjusting to this new particular new normal? Sure, sure. Um, you know, I, I remember the dot com bubble, um, and I remember trading through the housing crisis, which was very exciting and fun. But th this is this is quite something else in terms of what we're seeing today. Uh, but one thing that hasn't changed across all of this is how profit centers tend to shift over time. Now, generally, that's a function of technology. Uh, I mean, for instance, you know, in the early 80s, if you were at an investment bank, uh, the highest paid employees were research analysts, not the traders or the bankers. Because in the early 80s, if a mutual fund in Wisconsin wanted information on IBM, they actually had to fly the guy over and learn from him straight up. Now you have a world where information is free, so you have traders who have access to computing power making all the money. It's all about how technology is changing uh, profit centers. And the thing with Corona is it's also going to impact profit centers. Um, founders now have to think about how consumer and business behavior will shift after the crisis. Uh, remote working, is that gonna be the new norm? Will people want to socially distance forever uh, out of fear? Um, will Hollywood finally release blockbusters on day one online? Uh, these are things that will completely change how capital will move in the economy. So if founders are looking at how industries work for the last five years, they are going to be left behind. They have to dig deep and think about how behaviors will change. Um, and so similarly, I think in terms of like moving forward, this downtime that we have is actually incredibly important to take care and, and streamline a lot of things. And one of the main things that people were not ready for, I noticed in Bangladesh, is how to work remotely, because the idea of FaceTime is so big here. So figuring out how to you know, utilize Slack or utilize Monday, these are the things that will actually uh, uh, increase significant competitiveness between two companies in the same industry here. And I think we have enough resources in Bangladesh. I think founders need to seek this, these resources out. Hopefully we can provide them to them, provide it to them and uh, help them prepare for that next era of, of uh, startups. I think, uh, thank you, Rahat Bhai. I think uh, uh, those things are very valuable, how adaptability and behavior shifts will start happening and how we kind of, uh, uh, kind of address those as startup founders. Uh, next, I want to move to Bjorn. Hi, Bjorn. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so Bjorn, uh, here's, we also have a dif uh, difficult question for you. So a, how do you think the global investment landscape is shifting? And if you can also enlighten us a bit about the impact investment programs that Roots of Impact is launching in Bangladesh as well to support the ecosystem. So, well, um, what we are, thanks for having me in this, uh, in this conversation, by the way. Um, we are based in Germany, but working globally. So in programs across Latin America, Africa, and now also in Bangladesh <clears throat> in partnership with Light Castle Partners and many others. And uh, we are typically working with, um, with international donor organizations, but as well private capital providers, family offices, private foundations. We are in the impact investing space. So our clients and our partners are looking for positive impact on marginalized groups, right? And this crisis actually changes a lot uh, in that respect because what's happening right now is that the bigger institutional investors are actually reallocating their resources, their funds towards their existing portfolios. Right, everything which was planned for the future in terms of pipeline, in terms of um, future programs, is somehow on hold. But the existing um, uh, the existing pro portfolio um, has the strong focus of all these people, and the question is still, uh, how long will it take? How much liquidity do you, do we none, do we need to pump into these enterprises that they will actually? survive this crisis and even more importantly for our partners and for us to sustain their positive impact on their target groups right because we are talking about pivots here right and pivots of business models can also for 
organizations who are actually actually strongly focusing on uh, vulnerable groups, um, on poor people, etc. This could actually also mean that they are going up market, that they are shifting their focus to uh, middle income clients um, or even outside the country. And, um, and our program um, I mentioned is actually focusing on trying actually to help these enterprises to stay focused on, uh, on marginalized um, consumers, uh, clients and beneficiaries and help them actually to attract funding for this in, in a way of, of, of um, matching funding, like non-repayable funding with investment. And our program was never designed to actually um, provide support in such a crisis, but maybe it's um, more important than ever actually to have some, um, some uh, means of supporting these enterprises now to get back uh, in, a, in, in a conversation with their investors. Thank you, Bjorn. I think those are very useful. And um, uh, we will come back to that on the second round as well. And now I move on to Tinapa. Hi, Tinapa. Uh, I'm so glad that you are joining us here. I think- uh, Hello. You, you, the mic is off. So again, I know that uh, being an advisor to start up Bangladesh and ICD ministry, you kind of always hear this, and this is a difficult uh, point to answer. But the government is declaring a lot of uh, incentives in terms of stimulus packages and everything. So uh, in terms of uh, what's next, if you can give, uh, what is your view on how the government can support the whole ecosystem? And what do you think the startups should do uh, during these difficult times uh, in battling against COVID-19? Thank you, Bijan. Um, Bijan, um, and uh, hi everybody. Everybody, all the participants and also my panelists. Um, so I think that all of you guys uh, probably are aware of the Prime Minister's stimulus package, uh, which stands at 95,000 crore um, taka. And it has um, addressed uh, most of the export oriented um, sectors and also the SMEs and some other various areas, agriculture. Um, so, what we are trying to do right now, and you know, I know we are working, Bijan, you're also part of that group. Uh, we are working towards uh, coming up with a proposal um, just for the startup ecosystem and uh, a proposal basically how we can um, support the startups with immediate funding and different type of supports, in-kind supports. So that's one from the funds that is already available. And I will uh, share the resources that we already have and also how to um, how we can carve out a piece of that stimulus package and um, use it for the startups, not just only immediately, but also midterm and long-term. Um, and I had the opportunity to work with, you know, um, most of the panelists here, ex except, um, you know, Bijan, um, uh, but I think Nirjar and Rahat and Bijan, uh, everybody was there and Shamim uh, is very, was very instrumental in putting the VCPAB proposal that went out um, where you know, there were some suggestions of how we can help the startups by um, providing them some sort of a stimulus package uh, with um, helping them with rent um, and payroll and some other points. So we have placed a proposal a uh, very specific proposal on behalf of the startup community. And um, we just have to you know, wait and see how it comes out. Some of the readily available fund that we have is, uh, we all know about the idea project where we provide grants to um, idea stage startups. And we will probably continue to do that, but we are looking into how we can expedite or allocate some of those grant money and um, put it um, put into action for our seed and growth stage startups. We also have Startup Bangladesh Company, which is a PC fund, uh, fully funded by the government of Bangladesh. And it, um, I'm sure you guys have seen in the paper in the last, last month or so, it became operational. So we are looking into how we can reach out to that fund 
and uh, probably use some of the um, fund that's available there to um, to use uh, or to utilize for the immediate assistance for our uh, startup ecosystem. And when I say startup ecosystem, you know, it's actually the way I see it is it's like a pyramid. So on the top of the pyramid, we have the marquee startups who are putting the name of Bangladesh, uh, branding Bangladesh as a as a as an emerging startup ecosystem uh, globally. So those are the top uh, marquee startups, and uh, we we have to make sure that you know somehow we um, we support them during going through this crisis. Then we have the mid-tier startups, which is a little bit broader um, part of the pyramid in the middle. And these are, you know, some of the uh, very, they have lots of potential, good startups, um, but, you know, um, we need to see how, how they're going to pivot if needed or expand um, based on post cove market opportunities. So that's that base. And then of course we have to keep our supply chain going the talent um talented startup um, startups um you know we have to support them so that is kind of the base of the pyramid so we have looked into how we can use some of these available fund to support you know in different these startups at different um stages or areas of the pyramid um we are also looking into how we can uh, provide in-kind uh, support and that can be you know we have the high tech park facility we have um, data centers and how we can provide our startups um, logistical supports uh, pro probably giving them the data center uh, at a very minimum cost or um, you know giving them uh, warehouse facilities so so I just wanted to mention a couple of the alternatives or options we are looking at um, nothing is you know um, nothing is um, final yet, but let's hope for the best. Um, one thing, you know, I want to bring up is that, you know, uh, because I'm sure we have lots of startup here who are listening is that you must, this is very important. You know, cash is king. This is the time to remember that you have to make sure your cash goes, um, the extra miles and New York made, um, New York kind of, you know, alluded to that that you need to make sure that you know you have enough cash so that um, you are going um, the longer run because we don't know how long this is going to last. At the same time, if you have to look at your business, um, the product or the services that you are uh, offering, post-Cove market globally, locally is going to be very different. Um, there is, um, I was reading that IMF uh, chief said um, there is a 3% uh, reduction, a possibility of 3% reduction of global economy. That means that, you know, a lot of there is going to be shift, uh, behavioral shift um, uh, of uh, consumers. Uh, my, uh, the panelist before me, you know, mentioned about that. So think about those, you know, sit down with your advisors, with your business strategists, with your um, um, uh, um, the investors and see that where you have to pivot completely or where you can um, add um, expanded services. You know, we know that uh, Patao and Shahoj both, uh, I think Shamim mentioned them, both, uh, both of them, both of the platform added extra services that, is, that arose from, uh, from, you know, this pandemic, which is, you know, a delivery of um, uh, uh, pharma products. Um, and uh, we know that, you know, Chaldal, um, their grocery online um, orders um, uh, expanded, but at the same time, you know, they are now looking for um, um, additional warehouse facilities and uh, smooth logistical operations. So I think that, you know, it's a good time to um, also sit with, you know, the advisors and um, the investors and think about long term, um, immediate, midterm and long term. Um, so I'm going to stop there and then, um, you know, I will an answer questions and I think that, you know, we can also discuss a little bit more about what's happening globally, especially in the, um, you know, you know, in, in Silicon Valley, uh, as far as, you know, VC funding and um, uh, the trend for startups. Thanks.
Uh, thanks, Tinapa. I think that was very useful. I'm glad that you, you spelled it out in details about some of the things uh, that uh, you were thinking uh, on from the government side and also what startups should do, especially like the, the word that cash is king. Uh, since we're talking about VCs, uh, I just wanted to go back to Shamim Bhai and uh, A, both as the chairman of VCP, AB, and also as one of the general partners of Pegasus Tech Ventures. Uh, how are VCs, uh, especially when they're thinking about investing in, in Bangladesh, is uh, thinking about the sentiment? And what are some of the advices you should give to the startups as they approach uh, VCs during these uh, testing times? So, uh, first of all, uh, before I go to your question, I would like to mention that our honorable ICT state minister, Mr. Junaid Ahmed Pollock, is uh, very much concerned and he's a big supporter of our startup ecosystem. He actually called a meeting last week and uh, Tina Appa was uh, uh, very, took a lot of preparation. She did a survey for the meeting and she actually presented how challenging situation the startups are very well in front of our honorable state minister. And uh, <clears throat> uh, so that's something we can, we get a lot of reassurance where um, our state minister is keen to support, and so is our ICT advisor, honorable prime ministers, and the government. At the same time, there are people like Tina Appa who is trying to you know, help them with the right information. And uh, where I also got an opportunity to explain uh, how important is it to support the startup ecosystem. And at the same time, we also are trying to make it understand that this in the stimulus package, the loans, these are not for startups. First of all, you know, because of this relationship and collateral challenges, cash flow issues, startups won't be able to take that loan. And even they somehow manage, you know, collaterals and get the loan, how they're going to repay it? Because their model doesn't uh, support that kind of, uh, you know, monthly installments and uh, uh, payments. So, so that's why it's very important. We make sure that, uh, you know, uh, as, as Tinapa is trying to get the startup Bangladesh fund. Uh, so, so if that, uh, you know, that 50 crore taka, 100 crore taka, if you can have some investments in, you know, 20, 30, 40 companies during this time, that, that can help uh, startup Bangladesh and the VCs to get investment at a good valuation. At the same time, this is, this is the right time for the startups to raise money. Uh, so overall, and as, as Pegasus Tech Ventures and, and uh, other VCs globally, uh, many of them are now just, uh, you know, they're uh, pausing and just watching the situation. Uh, something is very clear that uh, with this uh, uh, COVID-19 situation, some of the industries will started growing very well, which is of course, uh, online grocery. Um, there is uh, remote working tools. Um, there is entertainment like Netflix, Bongo, uh, online education, distant education, uh, online health, telemedicine. So these are the sectors we all are looking into. And uh, uh, so that there is a, a big opportunity to raise fund or is, is an opportunity for VCs to uh, invest in the right companies during right time. But at the same time, you know, what saddens me to see in Bangladesh, we almost everyone tried to do the same thing. Uh, when there was e-commerce, everyone was trying to build e-commerce one after another. Uh, you know, when they uh, try to sell the same things, you know, if, if someone starts selling t-shirts, everyone does. Someone starts selling jamdani sari, everyone does. Now I see every company is, is stopping what they were doing. I mean, they didn't have to stop. The situation has made them stop. And everyone is starting, uh, online grocery. So grocery online, you cannot start an online grocery in, in two weeks. Charles Dahl and, and uh, their founder, they have worked really hard for, you know, I don't know, have last probably six, seven, eight years. And they came where they are. So we need to really understand just, so, so we, we can't be too much opportunistic. And even, I mean, you can't make money out of this, uh, even in a short term. Opportunities probably, you know, you can take opportunity, buy some PPEs from somewhere or import some from China and sell it to someone in, in uh, some hospital in Bangladesh or government. That can be opportunity, probably you can make some profit. But starting an online grocery suddenly, 
and that's not going to happen. Or, you know, if you suddenly decide that you will start your own Baiju type uh, online education portal, it doesn't happen, you know? So we really have to think long-term, we, we can pivot, but of course there has to be some uh, long-term plan back with it. From the venture capital and private equity, Sure, so from the Venture Capital Private Equity Association, we'd like to say that uh, we are all in this together. So this is the time, you know, the VC community, the angel investor community, startup Bangladesh and government and the startups, we have to work together. So we are just one phone call away from all the startups or one email message away. Please reach out to us. We will be happy to help you, you know, helping you pivoting your business model, trying to find out how we can, uh, you know, revisit your budget, how you can cost 20%, cost, cost 30%, 30% or, or 60, 70% at this moment. And uh, how we can, you know, get some customers in probably in the government sector or healthcare, education, and pharmaceuticals or online grocery, that kind of sector where they are still willing to invest money. Thank you. Rath, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I, a hundred, like what you said about the grocery really kind of hit me in the sense that at, at the end of this, when companies and founders go to venture capital firms to raise money, VCs aren't stupid. They understand, like, like we, we get that there's a crisis. We get that there's three months, six months where your business might not have generated any revenue. What we're going to ask you is what did you do in those six months and why did you do it? If you are a business that just started chasing capital and did not get a good ROI or did not spend the time to build the business that you built from the beginning or got funding from on day one, the investors are gonna look at it and say, you're just chasing capital. You're just, you're just, you're not believing in what you actually wanted to do on day one. And that's hugely problematic because when we invest in you, we invest in your ability to navigate crises, but also to do the job that we are giving you funding for. So I, I'm 100% on board with this idea of, of not just going and chasing money right now. Make your company better. And in terms of what Dinapa said, uh, cash is king. If two companies have mid to low levels of cash, but you both need services that you can exchange, if one person has, say, you know, uh, backend engineers, another uh, company has a strategist, make an agreement between the two and say, hey, we'll help you out on this and we'll help you out on that. No money gets exchanged, your cash balance doesn't go down, but your product gets stronger on both sides. I think uh, that's a really uh, interesting idea from Rahat Bhai, and thanks for Shamim Bhai for bringing that up as well. That uh, it's important to look at certain sectors, but it's also important to not just go with the trend and just uh, think that what is the biggest uh, kind of everyone is doing and go with the flow. It's important to understand where really your competency lies. I think uh, because it's like 5.40, uh, we just have 20 minutes left. I would like to take some of the questions from the chat window just to see, and then the panelists can answer them. Uh, the first question is from Omar. It's more of a comment, I think. Uh, Hello, Nijerbhai, good to see you in a long beard. Hey, Nijerbhai, <laughs> people like your beard, so that's good. Good to hear, uh, I'm also pivoting. <laughs> uh, that's good, uh, going back, uh, let's see, let's see. Um, uh, I'm just going down. Uh, since our aggregate demand is currently low in our economy, which will have a significant impact on the survival and growth of startups. And this is a question from Ashik. Uh, therefore, if this pandemic situation continues longer, what would be the strategical move to back these startups in the long run? Uh, anyone wants to take that? Uh, because the economy is shrinking and everything, uh, uh, and this continues because we, none of us know what would be the best strategic strategic move for a startup can i answer that please do not um ju i just wanted to um make one comment on that question and that is i think this is the time um echoing rahat that you know the startups needs to you need to create partnerships and see how you can um support each other um so you know an online grocery can probably um support the uh, home uh, delivery, the cooked meal um, startups, where you know the supply chain can be supported. Um, so, so I think that this is the time to look for where we can have strategic partnerships to expand the businesses. 
um, each other's businesses. And then also the other thing is, um, you know, not everything depends on the government. I think there needs to be a very good um, government and private um, partnership. So, you know, government can provide the funding or other type of supports, but also the private industry needs to come uh, and um, be a, an equal partner. So I just want to keep that, um, you know, on the table that um, it's not just one way. It's just that, you know, there needs to be partnership in every possible way that people can find because we have very limited uh, resources. Thank you. I, I think that's very interesting. Uh, going for strategic partnerships uh, as a part of the strategy, I think that should be very useful as well. Uh, here's a technical question from Barisha. Uh, as you have suggested that cash is king, can startups offer ESOP to the key employees in order to retain them? What uh, would that be a viable option given the current cash crunch situation? Any, uh, maybe Nishar Bhai, if you can answer that. Uh, one thing I'd like to say is, you know, we have the, the, the legal guru on the call, I think, Anita Apu. So I, I think, you know, I don't want to preempt her, her yeah. response. Yeah, Anita Apu, are you on the call? I, I think I saw. Oh, here. so uh, Anita Apu is here as well. Hey, Anita Apu, good to have you on the call. Hi, thank you. And thank you for the mention, Nijur Bhai. Uh, no worries. So I think, you know, maybe I think, she, you know, if you're looking for more specific legal tactics, um, at least from the companies that we've had, um, it's very hard to do, I think, a straight up kind of pocket shares for ESOP in, in the context of Bangladesh. So we've seen, for example, that you have shares um, issued under the name of somebody, potentially a founder, but it's been earmarked and it's been communicated that it's for ESOP purposes. Uh, so that's been one, you know, we've also kind of put on the cap table on shareholding documents that there is an ESOP shares to be allocated whenever any KPIs are hit within a certain period of time. I think those are some of the ways in which you can do that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's worth, I think, in lieu of the fact that, you know, we've seen portfolio and pipeline companies take across <coughs> board wage cuts. Um, you know, one of the key things right now is obviously employee engagement. And I think for the best employees, you know, employee retention. So I think it's worth exploring those kinds of opportunities to be able to keep that high. Thank you, Nijo Bhai. Uh, Anita, but do you want to wa uh, uh, add any points regarding ESOP or exercising under the laws of Bangladesh? I know you wrote an article on that uh, management, so maybe you can also share your exp expertise here. Well, sure, Vijayanthi. So basically, I um, echo what Nijo Bhai has just said. Now, ESOP particularly is not recognized in our law. We have put in that uh, recommendation to the Ministry of Finance because there's going to be an overhaul of the Companies Act. But while we wait for that, uh, what Nijab has said, put in a document about what you're trying to give to your first employees or your employees in the long run. You have to recognize, especially in, in this crisis time, you have to reward those who stay with you, who are willing to take a pay cut, who are willing to give you your, their time without overtime you know, without claiming overtime. But my one suggestion would be this, that the ESOP document or any document which will entitle them to shares at a later time should be in a separate document. Don't put it in the employment contract. Put it under a separate contract because there are going to be trigger events. And if this, those trigger events are not met, you don't want to end up with a legal dispute in hand. Thank you. Thank you, Anita Appa. Uh, I'll just step back a bit and uh, give Bjorn a bit of floor as well. Bjorn, would you elaborate on the two of the instruments uh, that Roots of Impact has launched in Bangladesh, uh, the, uh, the Impact Readiness Matching Fund and the Sync, uh, Sync Fund for the founders here so that they can take advantage of this opportunity as well? Yeah, happy to do so. So actually what we are doing in this program, which is actually funded by uh, development finance. So it's the Swiss government who's actually supporting this program. Uh, we want to catalyze private investment for early stage ventures who are creating positive impact on people and planet in Bangladesh. And actually we have two instruments here available and they are open calls right now where entrepreneurs can um, apply. And the first instrument is actually designed to support uh, ventures to raise angel investment, and it's a matching fund. So it's uh, it's a kind of grant. It's a non-repayable fund 
which is provided one-to-one -one matching uh, angel investment. And of course, in, this, in these times, uh, there might be quite a big interest, but we are just concerned that the co-financing is not coming in, right? So it always needs um, an investment round. We are going to match up to 100K US dollar. And we are selecting uh, enterprises who are, really, who are really able to create significant impact, uh, positive impact on society in, in Bangladesh. And um, that's just, this is one call uh, we rolled out. And there's another one where we actually go for a bit um, enterprises which are a bit further down the line, a bit more in the scaling phase. And we want to um, provide so-called social impact incentives, which is actually a way to monetize uh, this positive impact they have on society. So we agree with them that we pay them for impact, uh, like, a, like a revenue stream. It's also not repayable. And this, of course, creates uh, strong incentives, actually, to do just more of these. You know this from the carbon market, right? That enterprises are rewarded for reduction of emissions. This is the same uh, principle for the social sector, where companies who are actually, for example, creating income opportunities uh, for bottom of the pyramid clients, for smallholder farmers in agriculture, et cetera, who are really benefiting from this uh, incentives that they get actually paid for this extra mile they are delivering. Um, and trying to outperform on this in this respect. And this, of course, then they can build in their financial plan and uh, attract um, investors uh, with these projections because we are paying these incentives over a period of two to three years to these enterprises. And this all is, is just about um, stimulating uh, the whole system of impact enterprises and impact investors. Uh, thank you, Biron. I think uh, do take uh, uh, advantage of this catalytic funding. Uh, those who fit the criteria, more than happy to bounce back on this uh, later on. Uh, and you can just uh, message me or reach out to us or Bjorn Roots of Impact as well to get more details. Uh, going back to the question, we have an interesting question here from Ahmed Bhai of Hungry Naki. Hey, Ahmed Bhai, thank you for joining. Uh, he is interested to know if the venture capital here in, in Bangladesh should be interested to support through short-term investment or capital needs like a bond or notes for startups. Uh, maybe Shamim Bhai, Rahat Bhai, Tina, or Nijar Bhai, any of you want to put thoughts on that? Uh, short-term capital, uh, bonds or notes for startups? I mean, I, I'll just say something simple from my end. Um, our fund is a US, uh, New York-based uh, SEC registered fund in the United States. I have strict mandates on what I can and cannot do. So limited, like things like this are more problematic for me. I think these are scenarios where angel investors with healthier balance sheets are actually the best problem solvers rather than funds with guidelines for their uh, clientele. Uh, Nijabai, do you want to add uh, the angel perspective? What I understand is for the venture capital, they have a specific mandate uh, investment manager and everything, so it might be difficult to get that kind of freeway as Rahab Bhai was mentioning. Yeah, uh, sure. I think, um, I mean, so it's funny because I think Tina Abba, Rahab Bhai, yourself and me and uh, Anita Abba have been kind of going back and forth on convertible debt uh, as part of the, the rescue package that we were talking about. Um, you know, convert net, convertible debts and convertible notes are hard to execute in the context of Bangladesh. Um, you know, the instruments we use are typically convertible preference shares, which, you know, I think have the... Um, and we, because we can attach certain rights to them on behalf of the angel investors. Um, I know that, you know, share advance agreements, that's also something we do, uh, you know, that where by you're advancing money up front in exchange for shares with certain stipulations at a later time, uh, maybe within the tax calendar, but I've heard that there's ways to extend that as well. Um, so, there, you know, I think there's always instruments, uh, but the main thing is that the business itself has to be sound, right? Um, and one type of instrument versus another doesn't necessarily make an investment more attractive. Um, I think, you know, the fundamentals have to be right. Uh, I think, you know, some of the things that uh, many of the, the panelists have brought up in terms of what you can do in light of what's happening, I think that's what the investors are going to be looking for, right? Uh, the other thing I would also say, I think, that came up throughout the conversation 
I think in my short experience in the sector, I think the knock on many startups in Bangladesh, rightly or wrongly, is that they're focused on the 0.1% of the 1%. Right, the tri-state crowd, you know, those kinds of people. And I think what's been really interesting so far in, the, in light of what's happening is that, uh, you know, because people are home, they're adopting digital services in a much faster way. And I think that's created huge opportunities. And it doesn't matter if you're a big company, you know, just because you have access to huge bailout funds from the government doesn't mean that you can just suddenly become an edutech company or suddenly become a digital media company if you're a TV you know, station. Um, I think that creates huge opportunities for everybody here. And I think that's, and the key thing is, you know, how you actually take tangible steps to take advantage of those opportunities, the, 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 the plans you make and the stories you have to tell to angel investors. I think, I think that's important more than any particular instrument. Thank you, Rijo Bhai. Uh, uh, so here's a very interesting question that we have received from a Sakib uh, Mahabob. Uh, he's mentioning in a post COVID world, uh, how open should startups be towards mergers? If anyone wants to answer that. I mean, I mean oh. I'll, I'll just say, I don't think you need post Corona world that should have been happening at any given time. Like if you think the chances of you surviving and, you know, winning the market is better in a merger situation, you should do that instead of trying to do it alone. Um, I'll just say this because this has been something that's been very frustrating over the last nine months in Bangladesh is there's not enough collaboration between founders and I see opportunities between founders where it's, it's a two plus two equals five scenario constantly. And if more Bangladeshi companies collaborated, I think our ecosystem would actually be stronger uh, as a whole as well. Thank you, Shamim Bhai, you also wanted to add a point? Yes, uh, so as uh, Raj said, you should not wait for COVID-19. And now I think many of the startups will not have any other option but to do the m and and uh, we really need to encourage uh, all our startups to see that opportunity to m and And uh, I think uh, from uh, Venture Capital Association and the Angel Networks, uh, Startup Bangladesh, we should have sessions where, you know, we just have a few sessions where startups come and discuss how they can uh, do margin, margin and acquisitions. I think uh, Anitapa will have to write another article on that. <laughs> Amen aside, I hope we get that soon. Looking uh, forward to it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Can uh, I make Anna? a quick comment, Bijan? Yeah, please. On that. Uh, Go I, ahead. I think that echoing Rahat and Shamim, I think, you know, as a startup and as a founder, um, you always have to think about, you know, what makes best business sense for the company. And sometimes we are very much attached to the fact that you know this is my company but i i think you know you have to separate yourself you have to have the passion that you know this is this is the business this is what i'm doing um this is what i build but you need to have a good business sense when it is uh, and which will uh, which will kind of uh, allow you to collaborate merge um and you know kind of uh, expand what makes best business sense should be, you know, the driver. Thank you. Thank you, Tinapa. Uh, just as you're on the call, we have received a question for you from Razin from D2. Uh, Tinapa had mentioned thinking about different kinds of startups as a pyramid with later stage, more well-known ones at the top. Uh, what are her and others' thoughts on how the government can help the different categories of companies? So um, I, can, I can go first and you, know, um, you guys can chime in. Um, I think that you know, right now, again, we have to think about what the, the, the world post COVID-19 is going to be a very different world. It's going to <clears throat> change the behaviors, uh, buying pattern, um, commuting patterns, um, their healthcare needs, everything will change and that will create either new markets or we have to expand the existing market. So that's post COVID and that is the long-term picture. Right now, uh, right now, just to survive, you know, in order to uh, provide um, just regular citizen services, I think that we have to make sure that we are supporting businesses, not just startups, you know, any type of businesses, which is very, very essential, critical to, um, 
provide uh, uh, citizen services, uh, making sure that the, you know, the consumer market is taken care of, making sure logistics are taken care of. Uh, we are a very much agriculture-based economy, and we also need to make sure you know, the uh, agriculture sector, uh, all of these are taken care of. So, so it's more like, um, um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to name which areas uh, uh, falls in which part of the pyramid. But the way I want to see is, I want to see it is that um, which are very critical, very essential services for the, you know, just to keep going. And then post COVID, what are the business opportunities globally and even in Bangladesh, um, you know, that is going to arise. So for example, you know, I was looking at um, Kleiner Perkins and Loom is one of their, uh, in one of their portfolio. Uh, Loom's evaluation went up by 10X because, you know, it uses, it's a video, some sort of a video uh, streaming platform and does, um, I think some sort of, um, uh, you know, uh, using, using video platform, it allows people to work together and things like that. So, you know, this is applicable even in Bangladesh, because I, I see that, you know, even in Bangladesh, work from home will become part of our work culture. To what extent, not sure, but, um, you know, it will become part of our work culture, and that is going to um, increase demand, uh, collaborative uh, working environment virtually um, is going to become a demand in Bangladesh and definitely globally. Thank you, Chinapa. I think uh, uh, we are nearing the end of our session. I know there is still a lot of questions uh, out there, uh, but I, I don't think we'll have time to go through them all. But uh, you know, thank you for joining us. Do uh, feel free to email us back so that we will try to forward this question to the panelists and get you some answers. Um, and uh, 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 I think there's a lot of questions here. I think we'll just take one last question and then maybe we'll close the session. Uh, Uh, so there is an interesting question, and this would be possibly the last question for the session. It's from uh, Fahim Bhai. He mentioned that early stage ventures, when they raise investments, uh, they show traction to get a higher valuation or get investor interest. Uh, because of the COVID-19 lockdown, what are, what are the ways uh, the early stage ventures should approach this particular problem? So who wants to take it? Uh, I, I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say a really quick bit on seed round valuations. I think I think there's a fundamental misunderstanding in Bangladesh about seed round valuations in the sense that they need to be lower to incentivize your seed investor to continue to fight for you through multiple rounds. So regardless of your uh, your your traction, you should work with your seed round investor to make sure that they have your best interests in heart going forward for the next five years. So. I don't think the, the goal of having a really high valuation early is meaningful. For context, Gojek's seed round was 1.5 million. And I mean, last round raised was 15 billion. So when, when I have seed round startups coming to me and asking me for 5 million uh, valuation on you know, 2 million of GMV, I just don't know where that comes from. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone. We had close to 100 participants on the call. Nijabha, do you want to add anything? Yeah, just to, I think, add to Rahat, I think we, we deal yeah. with, I'm sure Shamim Bhai also deals with this issue from time to time. Um, I think the goal isn't necessarily to get a high valuation, right? The goal is to get good people on board. Uh, because at the end of the day, a startup grows based on its ability of its founders and its team to grow as, you know, as a collective unit and also to get smart people, smart capital on board at critical junctures in its, uh, in its timeline, right? So I think you know, if, if, if it's a matter of getting a really high quality investor, whether it's an individual or institution versus you know, someone who will just bring the money, I would say get that high quality investor you know, nine times out of 10. Right? I think that's, that's a whole different conversation we can have and you know, around valuations and startup fundraising and such, uh, but it's a really good question. Uh, thank you everyone. And I will just, uh, I think uh, we are close to six. I've already extended the time by two minutes. So I don't want to keep everyone waiting. So just uh, one line from each of our panelists before we close off. Maybe we can start with Tina Appa and then Shamim Bhai, Rahat Bhai, Nijo Bhai and beyond. Um, first of all, thank you guys for um, arranging this. Um, I think what I want to 
um, um, share the comment is that, you know, this is a really tough time. Um, but, you know, startups, I think you, you guys should stay, stay strong, be confident, and focus on making sure that you are taking this time to um, make the operations leaner, make, take strategic um, actions. Um, that, and I said that, you know, collaborate or take advice from your investors. Um, just like, you know, we are, um, as a startup, you are um, competing for the fund. Investors are actually competing for good startups. So there is a lot of cash that the investors have right now, um, almost 1.3 trillion um, cash that they are sitting on, a nest egg, and they are looking to invest that money. So if you are a good startup, then you know, I think that you are in a really good position and this is the time to um, kind of re-strategize. And if there are any type of loopholes or any, any areas where you need to um, be uh, improve yourself, this is the time to do it. So thank you. Thank you, Tinapa. Shamim Bhai. Um, so I would, I would urge everyone to focus on cost reduction at this moment rather than trying to raise fund because it's not going to be easy for in the next uh, one, two quarters. And on the cost reduction side, uh, you know, uh, we all have seen that uh, now it's a proven model. You can really work from home. You, you know, most of us can put, send 50% to 80% of our uh, employees who can permanently uh, start working from home. And that can uh, significantly reduce the cost. Regarding employees, uh, so leadership is taking very hard decisions. So, you know, you are accountable to your investors, you are uh, accountable, uh, you know, to your employees as well. So you have to take some hard decisions and the, uh, you know, earlier you take, that's better for you. There are a few companies during that COVID-19, they are growing, as I said, like online groceries, uh, Shopno, Agora, Unimart, Mina Bazaar, they're struggling with their orders. So probably we can think of, you know, renting your employees or, uh, you know, transferring them to some of the companies which are growing because uh, uh, you have to take some difficult decisions. But at the same time, please remember to take care of your current and former employees during this difficult time. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Shamim Bhai. Um, Nisha Bhai? Um, I, th I think, you know, maybe I'll just be, <laughs> I think it's, now's the time to go to work, right? I think, you know, there will be opportunities and, and now it's the time to, you know, I think we as an ecosystem, it's, it's time to get away from all these events, patting ourselves on the back and, you know, it, you know, now it's time to kind of actually do the work to build these startups and work together. And, you know, we're all fighting against failure, not against each other. I think that's what I would say. And also something you reiterated, we're all here. Um, so, you know, reach out and, and let's figure out how we can win. Uh, Bjorn, uh, any last words for everyone? Nicely said, Nijor. <laughs> I would also like to uh, focus on opportunities. So, I think founders of, of ventures and also uh, investors are very strongly focusing on opportunities, right? And just one comment on this. Um, I think we should not forget long-term opportunities. So COVID will change everything, agree, but there are other trends in the market, right? And there will be other crises in the market. And we should also consider uh, long-term development and not just riding this wave for the next 18 months, then, there is also a time after COVID when uh, the scene is there and others, and then we are get, getting back to normal. And we should also prepare for this time when we see light at, at the end of the tunnel. Thank you, Bjorn. Rahat Bhai, parting words for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you again for having this. It's fantastic. Um, yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, really, this is a this is a time to also you know, just think about what you're building, what you want to build. Um, I think I, I want all founders or potential founders to ask themselves this basic question, right? Are you solving a problem that nobody else is solving or 
at least do you have a way to solve it that is much better than an existing market leader? If the answer is no, I suggest you go back to the drawing board and rethink this. And one of the most no-brainers here is that four of the largest industries in Bangladesh right now do not have a disruptive leader. Agriculture, education, healthcare, and garments. When it comes to scalable startups that are technology enabled, all four of these sectors are looking for a king. Go be that king. Stop making another grocery. Wasim has too much business already, like he's, he's busy. <laughs> Let him be. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we will do an executive summary of this and uh, share widely so that everyone can take a look. I wanted to thank the panelists again for this. Ideally, we'd be sitting together and be handing everyone books or flower bouquets. Uh, can do that here now, but the next time we meet. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, good evening and stay safe. Thank you. Take thank care, everyone. You take care. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Bye.